This program was pre recorded. You've entered the Fletch Nation with Roy Fletcher, political analyst and socio political prophet, and Kevin Gallagher, TV and podcast host, and opinionated Jack Hall. So settle in, grab a beverage. It's time to talk some politics. It's Fletch Nation. Now, here are the boys. Well, hello again and welcome to another edition of the Fletch Nation. He is Roy Fletcher. And I'm Kevin Gallagher, and we're so glad to have you with us once again from the old school barbecue at 16. Well, it's on Corsi Boulevard. Yeah, it's on Corsi. <laughs> I can never remember the address. It's I'm right sorry. around the corner. I think it's 16550 Corsi Boulevard, but uh, just a stone's throw from Airline Highway in Baton Rouge. Come That's see right. us. Kevin, is there anything going on? Roy, there's so much going on. Really? We got a bill that got ramrodded through the Senate, $369 billion of what they call an Inflation Reduction Act. How spending $369 billion taxpayer dollars is going to help inflation beyond me. But now it's coming up for a House vote, and you know how the House is. So, hey, Kevin, it seems to be overshadowed by a little something else. A little something called Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago. A raid. A, a search. First of all, we deal with where did they get the search warrant from a judge in Miami? From a, from a liberal judge Well, in Bruce Reinhardt, who was a defense lawyer for Jeffrey Epstein, apparently, and a uh, and a big time contributor to President Obama. So in other words, he would he would have signed a pig's ass to get Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to make that clear. I mean, I'm not being ugly about it, but that's the way it is. Secondly, all uh, what did they what did they do and what did they find and why did they do it? I think why they did it is the big question, right? People have said that it's about the Presidential Records Act of 1978. If you believe that, you will believe a judge can sign a pig's ass. Okay? I mean, the bottom line. And it was not about that, uh, nor was it, that was the pretext. What it's about is there's an effort to try to indict Donald Trump for the January 6th stuff. Okay? That's what it was about. And, uh, and I said two weeks ago that I thought they would indict Trump, certainly before the midterms. But I thought maybe even before the Wyoming primary, Tuesday. Why is the Wyoming primary of interest to us? Liz Cheney, the vice chairman of the January 6th committee. Mm -hmm. The Republican that all the Democrats love. <laughs> Why? Because she hates Trump. That's right. <clears throat> and who's, who at the la last reports was about 22 points behind her opponent, Harriet Hageman. So, so anyway, uh, by the way, two days, uh, the day after the uh, event occurred, uh, two days after the event occurred in Mar-a-Lago, the uh, New York Attorney General brought Trump in for a deposition in a civil investigation mm -hmm. of his business and if you think that's not coordinated, you're crazy. All right? I think it's very coordinated. So I'm, I'm going to put this all in context in a minute for you folks. And then we went to, uh, we, we, we had that. By the way, Trump took the Fifth Amendment in the proceeding in, uh, he refused to answer the questions. In the proceeding in New York, pretty, uh, pretty interesting why, I would think. It was about certain parts of his business, and particularly real estate transactions that he may or may not even knew the details of because, I mean, it's a big business. He was running it and uh, not necessary for him. He negotiated and then would step out. We don't know. It was also about the way the property was, uh, what, what I've read is the way the property was assessed, et cetera, et cetera, t that related to taxes mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So I don't know. But the point of it is, is that is that all of that was interestingly very close together. Now, a week before the raid at Marlago, 
there were two, there were two F FBI, uh, what do you call them, uh, squealers, uh, you know. Uh, informants. Inform well, they, they were inside the FBI. And they had told Chuck Grassley and Ron Johnson, both senators, apparently they had gone to them, and told them that, that the, all of the investigations that were occurring on Trump, Russian, uh, all of that was very politically motivated. And that they had pr proceeded with those, but they had killed, they had politically killed the Hunter, Lunning, uh, Hunter uh, Biden investigation. Mm -hmm. So that was a week before. Grassley and Johnson were making noises about it. Uh, now I'm putting this in, I'm placing all this in context for mm -hmm. everybody. Now, by the way, the FBI agents that raided his home were from Washington, D.C. office, not the Miami office. Right. The judge was in Miami. The FBI agents were in the Washington, D.C. office. An interesting fact. Who heads, that just was appointed not too long ago, who heads the FBI's Washington, D.C. office? Hmm. The field office. Who would that be? Do tell. What, you don't know? No, I do not know. Well, I want, to, I want to tell everybody. You remember we talked about governor of Michigan and the rogue operation that was run up there and that the defendants were all found to be well, there were two mistrials and two innocents. The, and the FBI was involved in it in an entrapment operation. They were going to kill the, kidnap the governor. They were going to kidnap the governor. It turned out to be a false flag operation. It, was, it turned out to be an in, entrapment operation. Yeah. Okay. And guess what? That head of the field office in Detroit that, ordered, that did that, that managed that operation, is now the head of the Washington, D.C. field office. Mm. Okay, so, so now you're beginning to see the picture. You're beginning, you're beginning to get the picture. Let, let, let me put this even more content. Two days before the raid, at the CPAC convention in Dallas, Texas, Donald Trump said the following. We are a nation that has weaponized its law enforcement like never before against the opposing political party. For two weeks prior to this raid, Donald Trump has been vociferous and aggressive in challenging the uh, uh, FBI and the federal and the federal authorities, and he continually does that. And it's particularly about January sixth, and the whole notion of there not being a, be that as it may, that's what he's done. And his, at the CPAC convention, there was literally Viktor Orbán from the nation, from the, the president of the Hungary, I believe, came there and spoke and spoke of some of this. And Trump spoke and spoke of some of this. There were demonstrations at the CPAC. That, oh, wait a minute, we got a, we got a break here. I'm sorry, folks. We're going to have to break. We'll come pick back it up on the other me, side. Let me finish the story. Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we get back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hello, 
guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. The Team Automotive Group, we're offering you the team guarantee on new and used vehicles. Included with every new vehicle is a lifetime limited powertrain warranty. And now, get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Get the team guarantee at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Caught spiders Premier Pest Services. And we're back with Fletch Nation. Now, we kind of let the clock run out on the first segment and had to interrupt the Sorry about that. So, well, you were on a roll, my friend. But where we left off, we were talking about CPAC last week and yeah. Orbain yeah, making comments at CPAC. Yeah, Victor Orbain, the president of Hungary. I believe that's the nation he's the president of. By the way, Orbain and Trump share the same post. The McLaughlin Do tell. group. Yeah, Jimmy McLaughlin, John McLaughlin, and Jimmy and John both have been on our radio oh, guess program. On, guess yeah. on the radio program. Yeah, so so anyway. So the C CPAC operation, that's the conservative, young conservatives. They have five thousand people there. It was packed. And uh, and uh, they had all kind of uh, I don't know uh, how would I would say uh, they had little things around you know little, where you could go in and see stuff and all and they the biggest one was the the January six prisoners they had a couple of them in jail there they they say they were actors they were in jail in jail there and they talked to the people as they and and and, and the and the people that came to see them was like blocks long so so all of this was in the face of the federal government all of it now let's deal with the papers we, that's what they said that they came to get of course the presidential records act of 1978 says that if you keep those things and you do certain things Guess what? You can't ever run for public office in America. And that's the objective. And that, my friend, is important. Yeah. So, but anyway, so they came to get the paper. Well, in February, Trump and his lawyers had negotiated the return of 12 boxes of papers. And they were continuing to negotiate with the federal government when they pulled this raid. So, and the, and the standard for that is that the government had to have clear evidence that th it was intimate that or immediate or clear that they were about to destroy these documents that was that's sort of what they have to show so so we will find out what that evidence was when we see and this will never be released because they don't have to be when we see the search warrant and the and the and the statements as to the search warrant but they don't have to release that but we will find out certain things because i think it'll get out sooner or later so so that in february they had negotiated this and the negotiations were ongoing they were still talking to them about it and when, the, when they pulled the raid now was the raid about was the raid about the Presidential Records Act. There's nobody ever been prosecuted under this law. 
let's, let's remember, Sandy Berger went to the National Archives and stuck top secret information in his crotch and walked out. I remember that. Okay, and he wasn't prosecuted. Right. Him, okay? Well, it, that's because he was the he right. Was, well, I, I know, yeah. but he, he was of the right narrative. Yeah. But the point of it is, nobody's right. So, so, so let's get over all that. So what's the pretext? What is this about? It's a pretext. Now, I'm not the only one that's saying it. A, a, a very eminent former U.S. attorney, uh, Andy McCarthy, Andrew McCarthy, who worked uh, on uh, major cases in New York while he was assistant U.S. attorney up there, major criminal cases, major particularly organized crime cases, says that, look here, this was a pretext, Ray. What they were trying to do, they used the Presidential Records Act as a way to get a search warrant in order to go find information about Trump's frame of mind. And here's what I'm getting to, okay? Remember, this is about January 6th, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about January 6th. The problem that they have in the January 6th charging Trump or indicting Trump in that situation is that you have to know what his frame of mind was. There were competing legal theories. Whether or not they were good or not is not the issue. There were competing legal theories as to whether or not the vice president could send those electors back to the states and to let the state legislatures decide. That's what the argument was. Mm -hmm. They had already been certified, so on and so forth, uh, at, in December, the electors had, but then they had to come back and the vice president had to do what he had to do at that time and recognize that Biden had been elected. And there were, John Eastman, this, this lawyer, I think he's a law professor or something, and then there were others that were claiming, no, the vice president, this is not a clerical operation. He can actually make decisions about this. In other words, whether or not which set of electors we're going to choose. There were competing sets of electors. This is, gets complicated, okay? And the competing set, and so the government wants to charge Trump uh, with uh, certain crimes that relate to the competing electors. Mm -hmm. They're saying, well, they knew that this wasn't the way to do this, and therefore these electors were bogus and so on and so forth. The ones that the Trump slate, okay? Mm -hmm. They said Trump won. On the other hand, the lawyers said, that there, some lawyers said to Trump, no, the vice president can make that decision, or he can send it back to the states to make that decision about which set of electors are going to... So what that was, was a challenge to the system. It was a challenge to the process of the election, to whether or not the election was fraudulent or not. The point is, is the president had legal theories, and here's the real fundamental question. Was his intent to subvert the election illegally, or was his intent to pursue his due process rights as to the legality of the election? That's, that's the question. Mm -hmm. So the argument is, is that they went into his house to try to find evidence of his, what I, his way I would say, of his state of mind with, res, with respect to January 6th and what he was thinking at the time. And so they went in there to find documents uh, that related to evidence that related to that. But guess what? they had to use something else to get in. So they used the Presidential Records Act. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a pretext. There's a That's the argument. There's, it, there's a couple of interesting side things that went yes. on at Mar-a-Lago. Usually when they think that there's something in someone's safe, think, think they that, take the safe. At Mar-a-Lago, they crack the safe. They, 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 yeah, they take the safe, and then they get a specific search warrant as it relates to that, ch that, that, uh, that safe. In this case, they cracked the safe. The other thing I find interesting, I didn't know FBI agents were so in, in, enamored with a fashion, but they went through all of Melania's closets and clothes. What on earth for? 
You tell me. Well, they, maybe they were hiding a document. That, I don't know. That, I mean, but that is, and by the way, they would not allow Trump's lawyers to be present when they were, when they were uh, searching. Now, here's the importance of that. If you want to plant something, you, the, you, With, without, you can plant it because there's no witness yeah, to Yeah, who was there to see you plant it? Exactly. Exactly. Nobody. That's the point. Nobody. So, I'm not saying that, this, that this, re, this search was not justified or whatever the case may be. But what I am saying is that in the context of what we had, it was really egregious. Okay? I agree. And ugly. We'll be right back. Uh, that's my take on this thing. More to come on Fletch Nation. Stay there, please. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. The Mazda CX-50, confident on and off-road performance and intelligently designed utility inside and out. The all-new Mazda CX-50 has arrived and is on sale right now at Team Mazda on Airline. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here, inviting you to come by Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, where we tape the show live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 o'clock. Come by and feast on news, sports, current events, love of God and country, and lots of common sense, along with some of the best barbecue anywhere on the planet. 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Old School Barbecue, home of the Clarence Bugs Show. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Hey, here we are back again. Oh, with Fletch Nation. Uh, Roy, getting back to this whole Mar-a-Lago raid, uh, they found a judge in Miami that would sign a search warrant for what is a very dubious raid by the FBI. What do you search, know? Search, what, search warrant. What do you know about this judge? So, for search warrant is you have to you have to show probable cause. Okay, and it's a pretty high standard, but that a crime has been committed. So, this judge, first of all, was not a federal judge. He was not a district judge. He was a federal magistrate. Okay? Okay. So, so in, in the way I see, and maybe I'm wrong, 
But the way I see the federal system is that the district judge and then the magistrate is under them. Yeah. Okay. I am told on break, just a moment ago, that there is a significantly strong rumor. That's all I can say. That's a rumor. We'll find out very shortly. <clears throat> that a federal judge turned down the search warrant, would not sign it, and they went to the federal magistrate, uh, a, to a federal magistrate, not to his federal magistrate, or to her federal magistrate, but to a federal magistrate. So in other words, they couldn't get a legitimate judge to sign it, so they I found know, some no, slap nuts that would. A magistrate is very legitimate. Don't misunderstand me on that. I'm not saying that a, ma a magistrate is a very, very legitimate judge. Yeah, I don't mean to throw official. any shade on magistrates out no. there watching. Yeah, but, but, they're, they're, but they're a very legitimate official. And they do hear cases, and they do do things that judges do. But in this case, this was the pre former president of the United States and the leader of the opposition political party, and you go to a federal magistrate to get a search warrant signed? I don't think so. I think you got to go to a federal judge. I said that last night to some friends in the discussion of this. I said, I don't understand that. That just is out of play. Well, now, at break, I got a phone call that the rumor is very strong in Washington that a federal judge was approached and turned them down on signing this search warrant. If that is the case, this thing is far more serious than even what we think. This is a complete weaponization of the system. But let's talk about the weaponization of the system. Let's take a little history. I, t I talked about Sandy Berger a minute ago. Yeah. When he put it, okay, and he didn't have, But remember Lois Lerner? I do. She'd sick the IRS on, uh, what were they called? Uh, the, the, the political action committees of the Tea Party. Right. And uh, it caused people immeasurable harm and anguish. She was never, ever, ever, ever investigated up to any extent by the FBI. She, her home was certainly never raided. Now we're talking about classified documents. So if she didn't let's say she didn't have classified. Who did? Hillary Clinton. Thank you. Had 33,000 emails on her home server, many of which we now know were top, were secret, classified documents. They were, they were, <laughs> uh, as as the CIA guy I listened to on the radio said, TS or ATS above did, top secret. Yeah. Not only do we know that from the guy you heard on the radio, you know where we heard that from? <clears throat> Jim Comey, the head of the, of the FBI, FBI, who said all of that right before he said, we dec I decided not to prosecute. Wait a minute, Jim, you're the FBI, you don't prosecute. You're not a prosecutor. But remember, this, remember this thing. But he admitted at that point that she had done all of that. I thought he was going to announce that they were going to recommend an indictment. And then he turned around and said, we're not going to prosecute. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Did they raid Hillary and Bill's home? Nope. They went up and interviewed him for an hour, her for an hour and left. They did that. They went to interview him for about an hour and left. Nobody raided anything. Nobody did anything. Now, we have a Hunter Biden laptop who the FBI won't even admit is his laptop. Even though it's loaded. E even though with it's personal loaded. data and images, videos of They've him. They got videos of him with young children. In commission of crimes. Yeah, on crack cocaine. Hose. Sex with underage girls. Hose. Underage girls. All kind of rotten stuff. Have I raided his home yet? Nope. Nothing. Absolutely not. So when we talk about, oh, wait a minute. The biggest of all. Remember this guy, Carter Page? I do remember Carter Page. The FBI lied to the FISA court to get warrants to follow him and search him and so on and so on. Wiretap him, I'm sure. 
They were up there at the Pfizer court. They were wiretapping the White House. And there wasn't, and based upon a dossier that everybody now agrees was, how should I say this? Yeah. Okay? Horse apples. Yeah. Pig dung. So, so, so here we are. You, you talk about weaponization. The, this thing has been weaponized for 10 to 12 years. And now Donald Trump is the target of this weaponization. Now, what he did or what he didn't do, I can't say. We're not going to get into all that. And did he push the, that, that the election was wrong? Or, I don't know. You tell me. But I'm going to tell you this. I don't look at him now in that way. I look at him as a citizen with rights. And I look at all of us as citizens with rights. And this is tantamount to saying, if you're not on the right side of the narrative and on, with the right group, you can have your life destroyed. And don't believe that it can't happen to individuals in like just regular people in society. How do you get to the regular people in society? How do you wreck their lives with this stuff? The IRS. Thank you. And with that, Kevin, we will come back and talk about the bill that was passed. I have questions about the bill and that it will, hi it will pr pave the way for hiring over 80,000 new IRS agents. What are they needed for besides to go after you? And me. That's coming up. Fletch Nation, take a quick break. We're going to be right back. Plus, John Carmouche will be with us later in the show. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Hi, I'm Katie, Operation Manager here at Old School Barbecue. We're excited about all of the changes here at Old School, and we'd like to invite everyone to come out and enjoy some delicious barbecue at Old School Prices. We feature brisket, chicken, ribs, sausage, and the Boss Hog Pulled Pork Sandwich voted best deal in town. We also have live music Friday and Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. 10655 Corsi Boulevard. We can't wait to see you. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugé, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. At the Team Automotive Group, we're offering you the team guarantee on new and used vehicles. Included with every new vehicle is a lifetime limited powertrain warranty. And now, get a 90-day warranty on the purchase of a pre-owned vehicle. Get the team guarantee at every location of the Team Automotive Group. 
hot spiders. Premier Pest Services. Glad to have you with us. Coming up later in the program, uh, we're going to once again have a conversation with John Carmouche, coastal attorney. But as Roy said before the break, all this Mar-a-Lago business segues into a $369 billion bill that was ramrodded through the Senate. And now a vote is coming up later this week in the House. I don't see any reason to think that there's going to be a problem with this bill going to Biden's desk. No, it's not it's going to pass. And, and I don't think that it was ramrodded through the Senate. I think that it was, I mean, we just had some good old-fashioned politics. Manchin got bought. I mean, he got what some of the things that he wanted. And then Cinema. Cinema. Yeah, Cinema. She, uh, she kind of took care of her equity fund people mm -hmm. and slipped out the back door and gave them the vote. And then they had to vote on reconciliation. You had to vote on each particular thing. And there were things that were voted on that the Democrats won 50 to 50 with the uh, vice president breaking it. But like, for example, the 86,000 new IRS agents. I mean, think of Tiger Stadium. In the, you know, not too long ago, it would, that would have filled up Tiger Stadium. It's like going to LSU football guy. Uh, that's how many new agents there'll be. And the... The uh, uh, point is that is that that with the all of that adds to the notion of a of a state operation, an apparatchik that is uh, that, that that oppresses uh, regular people. The the Senate, when they were voting on the individual items in the, in that bill, the reconciliation, there was an amendment by a Republican senator to say that these IRS agents could not audit people that made below 400,000 a year. The Democrats defeated that amendment because clearly what they're interested in is to go in after anybody that they perceive to be, well they say cheating, right? Some people say well they're cheating on their taxes. Well, maybe it's about not cheating on your taxes. Maybe it's not being a part of the right narrative. Right. Okay. Re remember that, and I know you full well know this, but the Internal Revenue Service has sweeping investigatory powers. They're allowed to look at your voting record. They're allowed to look at your social media. They're allowed to look at all sorts of things not related to your personal finances and your tax record. They're, they're, and so what's to stop a radicalized, weaponized Internal Revenue Service from just going after people who don't think right. And by the way, in or the, think in, left. In, 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 uh, I'm not an internal rev, uh, an internal uh, an income tax lawyer, but in anything in law is this way. There's always places where it's nebulous. Uh, where can you? I take that deduction. Well, I don't know. The rules say I don't. I mean, CPAs will go through that, Williams. I don't know. We can be aggressive and do it, and if they don't like it, they can come back on you. Or they can do Not cheating. Not cheating to be aggressive. Although I've always been a complete nut about I, I, I don't want that. But the point no, of Who it, wants an audit? Nobody wants an audit. Nobody wants an audit. But it's, it's not illegal. It's wrong to say that. It's not illegal to take... <laughs> aggressive measures with respect to deductions and credits and so on and so forth. If you go over the line, the IRS is there to tell you, no, you owe us this money because you went over the line. That's okay. But then to come in, however, and to use that as a pretext, to turn your life upside down for five years back and to end up saying that in some way, you, that's wrong. That's wrong, and that's what that's what's been unleashed on the American public. Mm -hmm. It's been. By the way, I know people that have money that that they that that they overpay. They can't get the money out of the IRS. They can't get the money back from the Treasury. 
and they still wait on it three, four, five years later. When is the IRS, when they're doing that, going to be audited? Good question. Huh? Good I mean, li li listen, if you can't give the people their money back that didn't cheat, that you took too much, then by, by the definition these people say, well, you're cheating if you don't, if you don't want an audit. By definition, the IRS cheated you. So, Mr. Agent and all you people that did that, let's talk about you. I mean, I, I, there, there comes a point where the government itself has to be held accountable. And, and we're at that point. Oh, I think we're beyond that. Well, we're way, way, we're way, way, way beyond that. But you know what? It's almost like this. You can't vote yourself out of this. If the morass is so big. And what? so ugly, it's almost impossible to vote your way you out. You can't of. vote out the deep state. No, you can't. You can't. No. And I was asking Roy during the break, it's like, you know, I'm aware that the deep state's been around for generations, but it seems to me the deep state used to be right wing. Yeah, Hawks, it did. You know? Uh, well, they, are, they, they were anti patriots. They were anti commie. Anti commie, exactly. Yeah, they were anti commie. Now it seems like it's the exact opposite. Well, it's, they're anti-communists when it serves their purpose. Okay? When the communists won't play ball. No. When the <laughs> communists are the Ukrainians, okay, and they're tied up to your president, and they're, getting, they're soaking the taxpayers out of a, bilking the taxpayers out of tens of billions of dollars. Oh, you're, you're some kind of pro-communist if you're not uh, for the Ukrainians. No, I'm not for either one of them, frankly. I mean, a human... Humanely, I'm for, I don't want people killed in a war, but I, I'm not for either side in that mess over there because I don't know who's the bad guy. I know Putin's a bad guy, but I don't know about all the rest of it. Well, Roy, this Inflation Reduction Act, which, uh, as, oh, as, 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 as a couple of congressmen have said, is Green New Deal 2.0. Bernie Sanders says it will not reduce inflation. If Bernie Sanders says, I, I don't like this, it will not reduce inflation, I got to tell you something. It is. It's a flawed bill. Well, the basic economic principle that you could somehow spend money and solve an economic crisis no. is ridiculous. Next week, when we, when we do our show, I want to go through, by the way, the recent jobs report. Okay? Because there's some phony baloney going on with it. And there are people working on it now that can tell us exactly what, what the count and what was happening with this economy. If you think that we're not in a recession because 500,000 new jobs are created, you're smoking bad weed. Bad weed. And we will, I mean, we're going to go through that next week to uh, try to lay that out. Because, I, I, you know, when you hear things like that, that don't make any sense. You got to go, wait, wait, something, something's not right here. But you're right. Three, I mean, when, when we, when we, the CHIPS Act, which was a bailout for di digital, mm -hmm. the CHIPS Act would not have passed if they knew this bill was coming up. The Republicans would have voted against the CHIPS Act. Maybe it would have passed on one vote, Kamala has it. But they were going to vote against that. Instead, some of them voted for it. That wouldn't have passed. There was $250 billion. This thing is, and then we still have 10 years of Obamacare added into this that we don't know how much that is. It's from 80 to 100 billion dollars. That adds on top of this too. So you're talking about a trillion dollar bill. That's what you're talking about. Mm. And we're gonna dump that into the economy that's already suffering from inflation. A lot of very troubling things going on right now. Okay, it's time to take another break. When we return with Fletch Nation, we're gonna have another one of our segments, conversations with John Carmouche, Coastal Attorney, and more, and then we'll put a little bow on the whole thing and wrap it all up nice for you at the end. Fletch Nation returns in just a moment. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Sometimes life is wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. 
At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private Healthcare is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontis.com. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Treads and Care Tire Company announces its new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair with top-notch customer service. Treads and Care offers the convenience of shuttle service and pickup and delivery of your vehicle. You can also enjoy the comfortable customer area, complete with workstations, high-speed internet, and a complimentary coffee bar. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Treads and Care, the tires you need and the service you want. You know, um, there was a talk radio show host called uh, Sean Hannity. I think some of you have heard of him. He, he has a phrase he likes to use from time to time, let not your heart be troubled. And the, It comes from the Bible, by the way. The, the GOP is very confident that there's going to be a big shift in the House of Representatives and maybe a big shift in the Senate. But I, as we said earlier in the previous segment, I don't think that you can vote out the deep state situation we have in the you U.S. You can't vote your way out of this. The, uh, and the question about the, whether or not there's a red wave or not, I think that's, I think that's it's still up in the air and uh, will remain up in the air until we see the results. And, I, I, I've, and I've been very clear about that. I don't expect it to be 50 seats, uh, more like 20. And, 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 and it, the Senate will be very close. Uh, so I don't know. But I can say one thing. If it happens, the investigative power of Congress will suddenly shift. And things that have been swept under the rug will now be put in front of the rug. Mm -hmm. And uh, Democrats will have their choice. And that's the way the system is supposed to work. That's why we have a two-party system. And they tell on each other. Let I like make, that. Let me make just one point, though. We had Republican-controlled House hearings into the goings-on in the Obama administration. And what came of them? Nothing. Not a thing. So and what's going to come on January 6th? Nothing. Well, like, so sure wait, 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 wait. Nothing will come of the January 6th committee, except we now have a different situation where we have a weaponized Justice Department. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we have been having a series of conversations, well, Roy has, uh, with the Coastal Attorney John Carmouche. Very fascinating stuff. And in case you missed last week's, we're going to run it for you one more time before we move on to the third, to part three. Yeah. So, if you will, uh, Mr. Control Operator, uh, let's, ha let's have that interview once again with John Carmouche. Well, welcome back. We're with John Carmouche, a well-known coastal and uh, environmental lawyer in Louisiana, a land lawyer. And we've been talking about sort of your past and your education and what 
sort of brought you to the fight for the coast of Louisiana. There's bigger issues though, it seems, John. There's a new poll out by the New York Times over the weekend, the Siena poll, Siena College poll, that had 13% of the country uh, in, a, in a good mood about the direction of the United States. What, what do you think about the direction of our country? Uh, I think it's going in the, in the wrong way. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's too divided, Roy, uh, too much politics. Uh, I grew up in a political family, but also grew up believing in the real world. And I think we've lost the touch of actually working together and putting politics aside. You can have your views, and I believe in strong conservative views myself as a Republican, but I also believe in a real world working together. It's, it's, I give the example uh, that you know we show up at work every day. There's so many businesses in Louisiana that are huge and making a large difference in Louisiana. They show up to work every day to, to work together as a business. They don't show up the day to, every day to say, are oh, you a Republican, Democrat, Independent? They show up every day, they work together, and they accomplish huge things in Louisiana. But it just seems like as soon as you turn on the political uh, TV, when you walk in the state capital, walk in the state capital, it's politics, and everybody forgets that Louisiana needs to be run like a business. And to do that, you have to work together. And I think we've lost that in this state. Oh, I, I I can't think of a, a way to get it back either. But the uh, fact is, is that the point that you're making is, is that it's a necessity. It's an absolute necessity. This state needs to turn in the direction of working together, working together as a business to bring businesses here and to grow the economy and, and bring our kids back. Well, I mean, you bring up the economy. I mean, what do you think of the general direction of Louisiana and our economy in Louisiana is right now? It, it's terrible. I mean, we're in the 21st century and we're running this state like it's 1950. It's time to change, it's time to be pro-business, it's time to bring our kids back and make them want to come back. And right now, we need, a, we need dramatic change on education, we need a dramatic change on how we deal with businesses. We need to bring the oil industry back. I mean, everybody says I'm, I'm, I'm against the oil industry, I'm well, not so against we, the oil we, industry. We talked about that last week. I mean, you're quite the opposite, correct? I, I am the, uh, the opposite because I believe in if we zero out the liability, we can bring back. You mean the, the sort of the coastal liability? Clear the coastal liability, clean up this state, and make them want to come back. And we can bring the oil industry back. We got it. We have to make the dramatic change in this state that we've needed for a long, long time, and not just in not just because of the oil industry. That's one of the things that you have talked about that's so different, and in, in that is for right now for the Biden. The Biden administration has taken the position that the five-year plan on, on offshore drilling, they're just not even going to bring it up anymore. They're not going to discuss it. On the other hand, you've taken the position if you, if you clean up the coast and the liability gets cleaned up, then what you want is uh, an industry that can drill and, and manufacture and produce and the liability be gone. It, it, not only the liability gonna be gone, but there are great operators in the state of Louisiana today. And right. there are great operators that want to come here in Louisiana. In the oil and gas industry. In the oil and gas industry. Yeah. And, and, and get our industry and our people back to work and do it the right way. Yeah. And that's, that's the key is do it the right way, bring them back, grow the economy with zero liability, and let's move on. One of the things that has been discussed in the last couple of weeks, uh, Governor Ducey of uh, Arizona, has passed what they call the most freedom choice, education freedom choice act in the country, where basically the money follows the student rather than going to the county or the school board or what. It follows the student wherever the student goes, whatever school the student decides to go to, the money follows. Is that when you say dramatic change from Louisiana in education, that would be something that you'd want to look at, I would assume, huh? Definitely. I mean, I, I have to study it, but my my position on education is. We have to get our kids to want to stay here. And too many, our education, it needs a dramatic change in how we educate our kids because our kids have to want to be educated. 
you can't make and force these kids to do something they don't want to do. So there's a lot of things that look, that look at, like trade schools and, and getting these kids to be educated on the jobs we have for them in Louisiana. And so market sensitive. Market people. sensitive. Yeah. And make, make this a state where we promote working here, not promoting outside of the state. Right. So I, I think all of those programs are great programs to look at and definitely the state of Louisiana needs a change but, in, in but, education. But you would say that uh, if you're not teaching the basics and doing the basics, reading, writing, and arithmetic, you're not really accomplishing much, are you? Correct. Yeah, Correct. that's the kind of dramatic change Louisiana uh, needs. We have a couple of things that I kind of call it the quick round, and and we'll go ahead and, and get into a little bit of that. It just where you give me quick answers to questions that people ask. One is like uh, you you say you're a Republican. What's your position like on the Second Amendment? I'm for it, Roy. I mean that's I mean, that that's, that's, that's pretty that's, much that's, says it all right there. That's easy. You're, you're for that's it, you know. What about immigration, illegal immigration, and that sort of thing? I'm I'm for building the wall. I'm for keeping them out. We have this is the United States of America, and as long as you legally come here, then I think you, you should go through the process. I got you. So now, if I have taken my cue properly, we can now. <laughs> go to a break and we'll be back in a moment. Thank you, John. Thank you. Well, Kevin, what a mission are we on? We're on a mission from God. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So I think we have covered everything today that we needed to cover. God we could only cover knows what all, we'll cover We could cover week. a whole lot more, but I'm not sure the uh, penguin would like it. <laughs> you remember her? Huh? Oh yeah, the penguin. Yeah, the penguin. fabulous actress Kathleen Freeman. She's she's been in, in Hollywood yeah, for she's decades great, and actually. decades. Yeah. We're doing the Blues Brothers, folks. In case you you don't if you don't know that, go watch the movie. You'll always like it. It's a great movie. You know, I got one more thought on the Mar-a-Lago thing. There is a scene. Yes. There is a scene in. Uh, the movie Die Hard. Remember Die Hard, Bruce Willis? Yes. Where freedom. The, the thieves uh, posing as terrorists uh, run by uh, Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman, what they want to do is crack a vault. And they realize if they create a big terrorist thing, the FBI will come in, kill the power to the building, and the vault will open without having to be cracked. That's right, yeah. And there's that Die line hard. where Alan Rickman says, I, you wanted a miracle, I give you the FB. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I hate that because I mean there's so many people in the FBI. I'm certain that are, that are patriots. But, oh yeah, there's wonderful men and women yeah, in the yeah. FBI. And, and but, but folks, the top, the top, the top, the top, everything always rots from the top. Top okay? down. Top down. Don't and, blame the rank and, and file. They're just and doing I'm their job. That there's going to be have to be a whole lot more than just voting to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I don't mean anything other than civil, but peaceful. But Until we meet again, take care, and we thank you for watching. to Fletch Nation with Roy Fletcher and Kevin Gallagher. Remember, if you heard something that ticked you off, upset your sensibilities, or threatened your precious safe space, the opinions expressed by the hosts and guests are purely their own and do not reflect those of this radio station or its advertisers. So if you're calling a lawyer, or planning a boycott, or a cancel campaign, forget about it and join us next week for more Fletch Nation.